So today we're going to talk about inscribed angles. And this is going to be in direct contrast to central angles we talked about last time. Central angles have a vertex at the center, and if their central angle is 50, then the intercepted arc is 50 as well. So they're equal. However, if you have a vertex on the circle, and I mean vertex on the circle because a circle is made up of all these points, not this filled in area, just a vertex on the circle, it is always going to be half its intercepted arc. So that's another word we need to know because it it's a descriptive word if you know what it's talking about. So if this intercepted arc is 100, then the inscribed angle is 50. If the inscribed angle is 50, then the intercepted arc is 100. So you can double it or you can take half of it depending on which way you are going. So, for example, in this picture, we've got a circle and BZ is given that it's a diameter. We have this angle RBZ is 25. It's an inscribed angle because B is on the circle. So then we know arc RZ, which is the intercepted arc, is 2 times 25, or 50 degrees. And I have this intercepted arc, 80. So if I want to find a BZL, the inscribed angle, I could just do 80 divided by 2 to find the inscribed angle. So, and then we have to find measure of arc BR. BR and BR and RZ, which we found RZ was 50. And so if RZ is 50, we can do 180 minus the 50 to come up with 130 degrees for the arc BR. Again, it's 180 because it's a diameter, and so half of the circle is 180 degrees. Now, we have a special case of an inscribed angle if it's inscribed and it uses the diameter. That means the diameter, we just talked about it, is 180. And if we have 180 and we have an inscribed angle that is exactly half of that, it is 90 degrees. And so this will create perpendicular or right triangles or however you want to look at it. This is the special case of our, our half. Notice that 90 is still half of 180 or 180 is still double the 90. It's kind of hard to see sometimes, but this is our angle that we're talking about. And this is our intercepted arc that is double. Now, what if two inscribed angles intercept the same arc? So we have this angle right here, and this angle right here, and they intercept the same arc. And so, for example, if this angle was 20, then the intercepted arc would be 40, twice as big. And this yellow angle would be half as big because it's an inscribed angle that intercepts the 40. And so no matter what, any time you have an inscribed angle that intercepts the same arc as another inscribed angle, those two angles will be congruent every single time. Now, another special thing to look at is if you have an inscribed quadrilateral. So let's say we have a, an angle here that is 80 degrees. That means this intercepted arc here, the whole thing is 160 degrees. And if the whole thing is 160, that's the minor arc. If I go the other way around, it'll be 360 minus 160. And so this will be 200 degrees. And that's the yellow one here. 200 degrees goes all the way around here. And so if that is 200, then I should have grabbed 
the blue highlighter earlier. But then if that's 200, then this inscribed angle right here is going to be half of the intercepted arc. So if the arc is 200, this is going to be 100. And so what I want you to notice that if this is 80 and this is 100, opposite angles are supplementary in inscribed quadrilaterals. It's pretty easy to prove um, because you've got, if this is 100, this is always going to be twice. And then you're going to have the leftovers, and that's going to be half. And so if the two arcs add up to 360 every single time, the two inscribed angles are always going to be half of that. So they'll add up to 180. And so a specific problem that you might see is if you have um, if you have this 84 and this arc 80 and this arc 152, we want to find x and y. So how we do that is I want to look at, well, if this is 84 and this is 80 and this is 152, you can find the leftover 360 minus 84 minus 80 minus 152. You can find the leftover arc AB. Um, pardon my calculating here. So 44 degrees. So this is 44. And so then I like to look at, well, if this is our angle that we're looking at, this 4x, let's find the x first. If that's our inscribed angle, then our intercepted arc is this whole thing. And that whole thing is going to be 84 plus 44, so that's 128. 84 plus 44. Um, and so 128, if that's 128, if you do 128 divided by 2, you get 100, or sorry, 64. And so this 64 right here, this 4x, should equal 64. 4x equals 64. So you could divide by 4, and so x equals 16. Now, this 7y then should be related to this one across from here. I'm actually going to relate it to this one right here because I want to use the fact that it's 180. And so there's, there's different ways you can go about it. What I'm going to use is this right here. So that, those two arcs add up to 164. So if they add up to 164, the inscribed angle that goes with it is this right here, which has to be half as big, or 82 degrees. Now, 82 and 7y are opposite. And so 82 and 7y, we just talked about up here, inscribed angles, opposite angles are supplementary. And so you can say 82 plus 7y equals 180. So if you subtract 82 from both sides, 7y must equal 98, right? And 98 divided by 7 is 14. So y must equal 14. Now, I could have just simply did the same thing that I did before and calculated, oh, 7y is an inscribed angle and it's half of whatever 44 plus 152 is. And I could have done the same thing there. And multiple ways to approach these problems. Very puzzle-like, and so just keep searching for, look for the inscribed angles, look for the intercepted arcs, and look for those opposite angles to add up to 180.